Right, these problems ask us to analyze the momentum diagram. Now let's start off with a few definitions. So the first one is J. J stands for impulse, and that's the change in momentum of each object. Basically, however much object, however much um, momentum one object loses or one object gains. All right, and then we we'll also need to define conservation of momentum. On this first problem, we're going to use this to check our answers, but it basically says the total momentum of a system is constant if there's no external net force. And we'll show how, uh, in just a little bit how we can use that to check our answer. All right, so we're starting off with this car has a momentum of 5,000 kilogram meters per second. This is before a collision. And then afterwards, we're trying to figure out what happened to that car and truck. So the car started off with 5,000. And we see that the magnitude of that impulse is 7,000. As the car runs into the truck, it's going to experience a force to the left, and it's going to lose 7,000. So I'm going to subtract 5,000 minus 7,000 kilogram meters per second, and that's going to give me my answer here of a negative 2,000 kilogram meters per second. That negative sign on there indicates that the car ended up bouncing back to the left. If we'd ended up with a positive momentum, that would have meant that the car still had some momentum to the right. All right, then let's look at the truck. So we see the truck doesn't have any motion lines like this car has. When you don't see motion lines and you don't see a question mark, that indicates that the object is at rest. So the momentum of the truck started out at zero. Now that car or that truck is going to experience a force to the right. So we're going to add the impulse here, or add 7,000. And that's going to give the truck a momentum of 7,000 kilogram meters per second. The positive answer and common sense tells us that that truck is going to end up going to the right. Be careful. On the car, we couldn't just use common sense. We had to see kind of how big of a, of a collision was it to figure out if the car would still end up with positive or negative momentum. Let's go ahead and take a look at another problem. Oh, actually, before we do, let's use conservation of momentum to check our answer. So conservation of momentum says the total momentum of a system is constant if, no ex, um, if there's no external net force. So what I can do, let me erase some of this highlighting. So I can say, okay, let's look at the first line. What was the total momentum on this first line? And it was 5,000, positive 5,000. Then what's the total momentum on the next line? Well, negative 2,000 combined with 7,000 will also give me a positive 5,000. So by conservation of momentum, this checks out, and I feel good about my answers. Sometimes we're going to use that first when we solve problems. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this one. We've already defined the positive direction to the right, like I will in all of these problems. All right, also, again, a good first step is to check, see if there's any objects that don't have any motion lines, like this right here. And so our initial momentum for that car is zero. All right, in this problem, we're going to start off with conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum tells me that if the total momentum on this first line is 9,000 kilogram meters per second before the collision, then the total momentum on the second line also needs to be a positive 9,000. To get that total, I know this has to be a positive 2,000 for the car. So conservation of momentum checks out when I make the total momentum before and after the collisions equal. This problem asked us to calculate the impulse. So remember, the impulse is the change in momentum of one object. So let's look, how much momentum did the truck gain or lose? Well, the truck started with 9,000 and ended up with 7,000. So it lost 2,000. We see that these absolute value signs means that we want a positive answer right here, and that's 2,000. We can double check our answer by looking at the car. The car started off with no momentum, ended up with 2,000, so it gained 2,000. So this answer for impulse should be able to be calculated whether you look at, um, no matter which object you look at. Let's do another example. All right, 
So in this case, we are looking at the dodgeball that hits the student. All right, and let's look at the first line. So our first line here, oh, by the way, again, we see no motion lines here on the student. Initial momentum is zero right there. So on this first line, our total momentum is 80. So on the second line, I need to make the total momentum 80 again. Since I already have a negative 10, I'm looking for negative 10 plus something to give me 80. Well, it turns out I need to put a positive 90 right there to get both of my lines to have the same momentum of 80 kilogram meters per second. All right, let's go ahead and figure out now the impulse. Well, I can look at the ball. So I can do 80. What's the difference between 80 and negative 10? So I could do, to get the impulse, I could do 80 minus a negative 10. And if I do that, I'm going to get 90. And I can verify my answer by if the ball had a change in momentum of 90, looking at the student, the student went from zero momentum to 90. I again got an impulse of 90, so I feel really good about my answers. All right, in this next one, we don't have any impulse calculations on this one because we have what's called an inelastic collision. Inelastic means that the objects stick together following the collision. So here, they combine together and we think about them as one object. All right, so in this case, we are just going to use conservation of momentum. Again, conservation of momentum says as long as there's no outside forces, and the only net force here um, is the between the objects is the collision itself. There's no nothing else acting on this system. So on this first line, my total momentum is a positive 1,000. On the second line, I only have one object because they combine together, and so my momentum on the second line also needs to be positive 1,000. That positive tells me that the car overpowered the truck and pushed them to the right. All right, one last one. It's kind of the opposite of a um, inelastic collision. Is It's like an explosion problem where the objects start together. So we have these two people on skateboards. They're just standing there. There's no motion lines right here. So my initial momentum is zero. And if my momentum on the first line is zero, my momentum on the second line must also be zero. So how do I make zero? What in 440 makes zero? Well, a negative 440. So in an explosion problem, the objects explode apart with equal magnitudes of momentum. So a 440 and a negative 440. Remember, impulse is just how much momentum, the change in momentum of one object, or how much momentum each object gained or lost. If I look at the light green um, skateboard right there, their momentum went from zero to negative 440. So that means they must have had a change of, or a magnitude of change of 440. And the other one went from zero to positive 440. So again, the impulse here will be 440.